We're doing this. Eight reasons why WhatsApp was able to support 50 billion messages a day with only 32 engineers. Now, this is a lot of messages. I don't care what anyone has to say. People are like, oh, you're just going from A to B? How is this so difficult? Whenever there's 50 billion anythings you have to do, you got to remember that, what is it, 84,600 seconds in a day? That means every single second you're doing 591,000 messages. That means every millisecond you're doing 591 messages every millisecond. That's really, 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 really fast, right? That's a lot. Think about it. JavaScript can't even wake up on a timer when you tell it to wake up on a timer. Okay, it will be off by a millisecond. You just pushed back 591 messages because you were off by a half millisecond. Okay, that is crazy. In this post, we'll be outlining the incredible story of WhatsApp co-founder uh, Jan Com, or is it Jan Com? Uh, and the engineering techniques employed to scale WhatsApp quickly. If you know somebody who wants to study scalability patterns, considering sharing this post with them. We're going to share right now. Actually, in January 2008, California, United States, classic 2008. Everyone was there. Uh, Jan Com, an engineer at Yahoo. Why is that? I swear to good, to gosh. H-E uh, double hockey sticks. What the H-E double hockey sticks is going on here? The best engineers I know were early day Yahoo engineers. I think there is something, I think there's something to it. I think there's something in there. Do you know what I mean? Anyone that's been a part of the Valley knows for a fact that when you were early Yahoo, this was like a sign of the great engineers. Like these are the great ones. Now, everybody had this idea that, uh, you know, Google was the great place. I'm telling you, Google was not the place in the Valley. Everybody talked about the Yahoo engineers. My time there, especially in the early 2013s, I went from 2013 to 2020 was my time in the Valley. And during like 2013 to 15, that's all you heard about was Yahoo engineers. It's wild. YUI. I worked with some of the creators of YUI. It's crazy. It is crazy. Uh, let's see. Applies to work at Facebook. Rejected. Loser. This was not the end. He moved on with his life. He buys an iPhone in a subsequent year and immediately recognizes the huge potential of the new app store. He decides to build an instant. These pop-ups are just the worst. He buys an iPhone in the subsequent year and immediately recognizes the huge potential of the new app store. He decides to build an instant messenger with some of his former, former co-workers from Yahoo. Called it Yahoo skill issue. They name it WhatsApp. The vision behind WhatsApp was to replace the expensive SMS. Brilliant, really. SMS was expensive during those days. Remember those days? Do you remember that you used to have to buy like a thousand messages and then you had to like pay for more than a thousand messages? Isn't that wild? Like that's wild you had to do that. Crazy. With 1 million people signing up each day, the growth rate of WhatsApp was mind boggling. Agreed. WhatsApp was able to support 50 billion messages a day from 450. 50 million daily active users with only 32 engineers. So I do want to say something right here that makes this slightly less impressive in some sense. We, Netflix, supported billion hours of streaming with like um, with less than 2,000 engineers for quite some time. And part of that is because when you have a very narrow product, you can also make uh, really big things happen on a very narrow scale. So I don't think it's like, so WhatsApp is a very narrow product. You're not trying to build the soup kitchen. This ain't Amazon. You're building one thing and one thing well, right? So is this good? Is this bad? I still think it's impressive. Although explosive product growth is a good problem to have, Jan, I'm just going to call him Jan, and the team behind WhatsApp had to adopt the best engineering practices to overcome the challenges. In my opinion, Jan, if you were on here, it'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, it is Jan. Oh, that problem's so hard. Oh. That's me doing a German accent, which I'm very bad at. Yeah, the German accent's so bad. Ooh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> Canceled. All right, now that we got done uh, speed speed running canceling today, uh, WhatsApp engineering. The WhatsApp engineering practices to attain extreme scalability can be summarized as follows: single responsibility principle. The product focus was always on the core feature, messaging. Yes, I just I literally said this. Single like single focus do Arnold yeah it's a, it's a single focused <laughs> yeah you got to put all your focus on it <laughs> uh, anyways <laughs> they didn't bother to build an advertising network or a social media platform uh, user needs 
stakeholders ideas this is great this is really great this is a great beautiful picture right here this is great I'm not blushing. You're blushing. Uh, they eliminate feature creep at all costs. Feature creep is when you add excessive features to a product that make it too difficult to use. Uh, the minimalistic product requirements. The team was able to prioritize the re uh, reliability of WhatsApp over everything else. Absolutely. We did this a lot in my early days at Netflix. Uh, I built out the social network feature in Netflix way back in the day, uh, 2013, 2014. 2014, it came out. Darwin Social Mountain is what we called it. And we saw a lift in streaming. More people used our product and started streaming. But because we were doing a rewrite coming up next of the website and the streaming lift was there, but it wasn't huge, we literally just scraped the feature because why support a feature long term, right? Wasn't worth it. Get it out. Get it out. Technology stack. Erlang programming language was used to implement the core functionality of WhatsApp servers for the following reasons. Of course, here it comes. Functional bros. Shy Rai. Come on, Shy Rai. You want to talk about Elixir now, Shy Rai? Shy Rai. It's not O Camel. Kind of sounds pretty stupid to me. Sounds kind of lame. Just saying it sounds kind of lame. Not O Camel. Not my problem. That's what I always say. Provides extremely high scalability with tiny footprint. Monads. Okay, we're going to do it. We're going to go to Imager. Uh, we're going to go to Imager. It just feels like the right time to do this, right? Uh, ancient aliens guy, right? This just feels like the right one. We jump on here. This feels like a good time to do this and just toss in monads. It just feels like the right thing to say in the moment. You know, sometimes you just got to do it and you just generate the meme and you just save it and you monads. It just feels right, you know? And then you go to, you go to what appears to be twitter.com. But it says X, but we're still at Twitter. Nobody knows what's actually happening with this whole Twitter.com business. Take this, post it, and there you go. That's how you become a successful social marketer. Okay, that's when I was looking up stuff about that. So there we go. We're back in. We're back in. Blazingly fast memes. Monads, less problem. That's true. Uh... Uh, Joe Armstrong did not uh, regard Erlang as a functional programming language. He regarded it as a concurrent programming language above all else. Oh, that's actually extremely interesting take. Huh. Okay. That's cool. That's kind of like a cool way to think about it. Uh, extremely high scalability with a tiny uh, footprint supports hot reloading. That's cool. Hot reloading is a big thing. The faster your stuff happens, obviously, the nicer it is. Really like that. Threads are native feature of Erlang. Unlike Java or C++, where threads belong to the operating system, the native threads in Erlang make context switching cheaper because there's no need to save the entire CPU state. In other words, green threads. But green threads have been implemented everywhere at this point. How reloading makes it easier to deploy code changes without the server restarting or traffic reduction or redirection. Oh, interesting. You can just hot reload that damn thing live. In, so, in simple words, hot reloading offers extreme high availability. That's cool. Just literally go. That's cool. That's cool. Why reinvent the wheel? Do not reinvent the wheel. Either use open source or pur purchase a commercial solution. Sorry, I'm too busy. Yeah, okay, fair, fair. Uh, Edge Baird is an open source real-time messaging server written in Erlang. WhatsApp was built on top of Edge Baird. Um, really, that stands for Edge Beard which is actually edge lord with the beard, I think is what it means. The team extended uh, edge of beard by writing uh, some of the core components to fit their requirements. WhatsApp leveraged third-party services such as Google Push to provide push notifications. Yeah, that, I mean, that seems reasonable. Cross-cutting concerns. Cross-cutting concerns are the things that affect many parts of the product and are hard to separate. For example, monitoring and alerting the health of services. A huge emphasis was given to cross-cutting concerns to improve product quality. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, these all look good. I love your circle. Thank you for that. Continuous integration is a practice where engineers regularly merge their code, changes into a central repository. Continuous delivery is a practice of automating or automatically deploying your code. Okay, WhatsApp employed continuous integrations and continuous delivery to improve their software development process with hot reloading. Okay, so, I mean, this is just called uh, good prep. Just like everybody, everybody does this, okay? You're, that's not, what are you, trying to impress me at this point? You're trying to impress me? What are you, you trying to, like, make me feel happy about something? Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, scalability. Horizontal scaling is the process of increasing the number of machines in the resource pool. Vertical scaling is the process of increasing the capacity of an existing machine, such as CPU and memory. Diagonal scaling is the hybrid of horizontal and vertical scaling where computing and resources add both vertically and horizontally. Okay, WhatsApp utilized diagonal scaling. 
uh, to keep costs and operational complexity low. This is actually really good because I do think I do like the idea of uh, diagonal scaling. If you have the ability to use all your processes, like unlike a node application in which you have to treat you have to like come up with this highly theoretical idea of how you're supposed to handle how many node instances are on a machine and you have to go all confusing as opposed to a single language managing it all. I like the idea that you want to do both, right? Because a, a more expensive machine might be able to handle three times more the load, but cost only twice as much as the smaller one. So there is something really good here, right? There's something very, very good here. Free BSD. Ooh, ooh, operating system was used to run a WhatsApp neckbeards for sure. Uh, because, I mean, I guess they are using Erlang. I mean, they're already there. They're already there. Not surprised at this point. Because they had previous experience with FreeBSD while working at Yahoo. In addition, FreeBSD offers a nicely tuned and reliable network stack. Yeah, I've heard really great things about the network stack. FreeBSD was fine-tuned to accommodate 2 plus million connections per server. The kernel parameters such as files and sockets were modified. Class classic. Gotta bump that U limit, dog. Uh, the servers were over-provisioned to handle sudden traffic spikes and keep headroom for failures such as network partitions or hardware faults. Okay. The metrics such as CPU, contact switches, and system calls were measured. The bottlenecks were identified and eliminated. Uh, this was performed at regular intervals. Okay. The continuous feedback cycle tremendously improved the performance of WhatsApp. Load testing is the process of measuring. I mean, by the way, this all sounds really good, right? You use the right... They, I mean, it, it really sounds like they used the right tools for the job, Right. You have a language that can hot reload itself in production. You used the operating system in which is like known for being best in class networking. You offload everything you don't want to build yourself. And you just crush. I mean, this, it seems, this seems, and then you can continuously try to improve performance. This seems like the right model for a very simple app, right? I don't understand anything. What? We'll start understanding then. Load testing is the process of measuring the performance of a system under anticipated load. Uh, load testing was performed to identify single points of failure. Yep, that's good. Uh, load testing was performed by either generating artificial production traffic or configuring DNS to redirect more tra traffic to a particular server. Classic DNS is always the issue. I, I, I always worry about anytime you touch DNS, terrifying. It's just terrifying, okay? Small team size. The communication path between engineers increased quadratically as the... Wow, quadratically. Um, pound me daddy redirection. That's what it stands for. Uh, as the team, uh, grows in size. Uh, this is a recipe for degraded productivity. I actually agree with this heavily. The more I have to communicate, the harder it is. Like, just like that thing I was talking to you uh, earlier about, about, uh, having a schema and a data output. And I just wanted the, the schema decoding function that was used clearly on a website. And this website was, was handled by like six different teams and I must have communicated with at least 20 to 30 different engineers, none of whom could actually tell me. I went to several Slack rooms, and at the end, it was more efficient for me just to rewrite the decoding process than to figure out what the hell happened to that library or whatever they used, right? Like, there just does come a point where duplication is a requirement as engineers grow, and it's very, very difficult. The size of WhatsApp engineering team was a, uh, was a small kept 32 engineers, right? WhatsApp, uh, so I, I do think that this is a huge W. When you have a narrow product plus few engineers, you can accomplish an incredible amount of stuff. I don't know if you can say it's a fully connected graph like this, but it is something that really does scale disproportional. Uh, WhatsApp is considered one of the most successful instant messengers on the market. In 2014, WhatsApp was acquired by, for a whopping 19 billion USD by the same Facebook that rejected Yan. According to Forbes, Yan uh, uh, has a net worth of 14 billions in 2023. So many commas. Um, moral of the story, Facebook loves spying on your ass. <laughs> Thanks for the moral of your story. Uh, appreciate that. A good reason, by the way, this is a great reason to use Signal, okay? Signal is designed in a way that it's unacquirable, right? Signal. Use Signal because guess what? It's actual encryption that takes place not in some place in which is saving all your data. Love it love signal hashtag ad this is not an ad actually i just use signal all the time because it's way 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 good right signal is good but it could be better of course it could but that's what happens when you make zero dollars signal do you know that signal is ran off of charity do you, re you realize that right signals ran by the uh, the nsa dude greatest anime betrayal of all time the name is I've actually never used WhatsApp. I mean, I, I was a part of it one time, and then I just never got it again because it just made me feel uncomfortable, and I didn't really like WhatsApp. 
This was like back in 2018 when I was text messaging some of my Yahoo, f former Yahoo uh, co-workers at Netflix. It was very fantastic. Uh, Jen, 